Welcome back to Wellness Wednesday. As we spend more time outdoors in the summer, it's important to take a look at how we're protecting our largest organ, our skin. Many of us use sunscreen to armor our skin from harmful UV rays and some sort of repellent to protect us from those pesky bugs. But you may want to consider what your body is absorbing when you're using these products. Joining me in studio once again, the only just Joni with Homegrown Health Podcast. Thanks so much for being here, Joni. You are welcome. Thanks for having me again. So we have so much to cover when it comes to organic and natural skin care. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an ongoing theme with us the last few times I've been here because it is such an important topic. So first let's talk about those pesky buffalo gnats. Yes, okay, here's the deal, <laughs> people. Uh, swarms of gnats. Everywhere. And they're just, they're getting people. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to bug repellent, yeah. um, what does the research say about the, the current products that are, are more commercialized? So we want to look at the difference between chemical and natural or organic. Mm -hmm. So a chemical DDT, or uh, not DDT, I'm sorry, DEET, yeah. would be a very common um, chemical used in bug spray. However, it's not supposed to be near your mouth. It's not supposed to be near children, and it's not even safe to really use on kids, according to our uh, governing agencies. So we want to make sure that we have other alternatives that would be safer not to get into their eyes, their mouth, in through their nose, because really, what is the long-term effects of inhaling something like DEET, or it absorbing into our skin. Um, minimal skin exposure is always the best bet. Your clothing is there to be your protection. So mm -hmm. don't go hiking in the woods in, a short, in shorts and a tank top and sandals, mm -hmm. right? It just makes sense to utilize natural protection barriers just even through clothing and that, that goes for sun too. Right, and it, when it comes to healthier alternatives, when it comes to bug spray, yeah. um, it's hard because we know that insects can cause problems. They Correct. can carry diseases. Yep. So how do you weigh the risks of the insects with the risks associated with the chemicals that are engineered to protect you from them? Right, so the reapplication is what I have to look at. How often are you reapplying? Because there are warnings against that too. So if you do feel you need to use some kind of insecticide like DEET spray, you wanna make sure you're not breathing it in. You want to make sure it's not getting in your eyes and your mouth. You don't want to use it on small children and you want to dress as fully clothed as you possibly can, only using it on minimal amounts of exposed skin. Otherwise, we have amazing yes, products. Yes. I had to swing by Natural <laughs> Grocers so I could get all of this for us. But according to them, Skeeter, I mean, everybody uses the, the bug soother the, in the green bottle. Yeah. Everyone swears by that. And this lady here at Natural Grocers swears by Skeeter. And she has farmers coming in, uh, organic farmers using it for their pets. Mm. Um, the main ingredient is this geranol. Yeah. Okay. And so that is a mixture of lemongrass oil and what you get from geraniums, the flowers. Huh. In fact, years and years ago, uh, the flower tansy, I believe, used to be planted to repel mosquitoes. So nature always has a way of balancing things out. There are always things that you can use. This is a garden candle you can burn on your patio. Um, they even make a really great egg that you can hang like a diffuser and pour this oil into it to deter a certain radius of your deck or patio in order to enjoy some bug free you know, in, in environments um, when you're outdoors. You can also make a spray, and I, I have a glass bottle here, a sprayer. You can use things like essential oils of lemongrass. You can use, um, another one is uh, lemon eucalyptus, mm. which works really well. Citronella, which you've heard of the citronella candles that you burn on your patio. You can actually buy essential oils and put, you know, five to 10 drops of each in a bottle. Synergistically, they work really well together to help repel bugs, and you don't have to worry about some of the chemicals side effects. That's great and yeah. I always think that if you can go natural it always is a better yep. option for your health for the environment yep. and all of that and just to be able to enjoy time outside I mean finally you know the weather is warming up is. and you hate to just stay inside because of the bugs and the gnats and all that stuff so yeah. natural bug spray can be a definite way to go. Yeah so the Skeeter one I guess is is really great even catnip you can use catnip as a bug spray what? as well. Yeah, catnip has human uses too. It's not just to make our cats go crazy. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. there you go, I never knew that. Okay, let's shift a little bit after yeah. we have dealt with the nasty bugs. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the sun. Okay, so we know that harmful UV yep. rays can really uh, be detrimental to our health. Yeah. However, we do need sunlight. Sunlight has huge benefits. So uh, Joni, how do you weigh you know, the risks with the benefits there and how much sun exposure you should be getting? Well, Again, we definitely want to protect against UVA and UVB rays, the so things that it causes skin cancer, melanoma is on the rise. So we definitely want to make sure we utilize 
our UV protective clothing, first and foremost, staying out of the sun between those peak hours when the UV index could be a lot higher between 11 and 3. You know, utilize those big beach hats, mm -hmm. get some clothes with some UV protection, and really be smart about how you expose yourself to the sun. Now, that being said, <laughs> um, some of the most popular chemical sunscreens, there's a difference between sunscreen and sunblock. Uh -huh. So sunscreen helps to filter out those rays. Sunblock actually helps to protect your skin and provide a barrier from the sun, from your skin absorbing. Huh, I never knew the yes. difference there. I just thought they were interchangeable. They the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I did too until <laughs> I did my research. So um, one of the things that we found too, according to a study done by the CDC, 96% of Americans have the chemical sunscreen oxybenzone. That chemical is detectable in their body. Mm. And we want to also make sure that what you're putting on is safe. Out of the 1,400 different sunscreens that are available, all of them, less than 5% met all of their safety standards. So again, if you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. That's been something we've repeated here um, when I'm on the show. So your best bet is to go with a, an equivalent mineral sunscreen or scun, um, sun protectant uh, sunblock. So one of the ones that scored the highest and the most safe was a brand called Badger. And Badger's safe for kids. It has an SPF 30. It's a natural mineral sunscreen. It's water resistant, so you definitely um, have to, you know, reapply it after you've been in the water, but it's going to help repel some of that as well. It's non-GMO and non-nanoparticulate. So when you're dealing with the main ingredient, zinc oxide, there can be nanoparticulates that your body can absorb. And again, even with natural things, we have to be careful what we are absorbing and what's getting in through our skin. And it's biodegradable and reef safe. So Hawaii and the Florida Keys have banned most over-the-counter sunscreens because it's harmful to our ocean. Huh. It's creating DNA damage in the coral reefs. It's bleaching them, changing the, the whole ecosystem on the reef. And um, if it's doing that in a diluted ocean, what can it be doing in our skin? Right, right. that's a great point. Yeah. Wow, okay, so. <laughs> a lot of information to I know, take in. a lot of information, but it, it was a, a very important topic for us to talk about because um, we've been hearing more things in the media about you know sunscreen being bad for you bug spray being bad for you and then it leaves people feeling very helpless because right. it's like we want to protect ourselves from bugs we want to protect ourselves from harmful UV rays yes. but how are we supposed to do that so thank you so much oh, for welcome. for offering some more natural holistic yep. alternatives to help us protect ourselves um, in, in the healthiest way possible oh you're so welcome it's one of my favorite things to talk about obviously so awesome thanks for having me on Definitely. As always, great to have you, Joni. We will have these details posted on ourquadcities.com. More Living Local continues right after this. Stay with us.